Hello Jean and welcome back. We're going to talk about the update of what's going on with um, COVID-19 at the moment. Um, how are you doing today, Jean? We're fine. Very healthy in beautiful, sunny Southern California. Lucky you. <laughs> um, so what's happening? What's happening in, in the world of COVID-19 and, and, and vets and pets? And that's what we really want to talk about. What, what's happening at the moment? Unfortunately, rumors and panic are still prevailing worldwide, mm -hmm. and people are getting confused about the virus of SARS-CoV-2 right. and the disease it can cause in some people, COVID-19. Okay, mm -hmm. So the disease is COVID-19. The virus is SARS, severe uh, upper respiratory disease that was first recognized in 2003, Okay, but it wasn't same strain as it is today um, and then it evolved and mutated in China it had seven the Chinese Wuhan strain that we first recognized from China um, was 70 percent similar to the SARS of 2003 it was 96 percent genetically identical to bat coronavirus now, the right. problem I see is that people are confusing exposure to the virus Mm -hmm. to the disease of COVID-19. Yeah. COVID-19 means that virus caused a disease and very few people are actually getting sick. Yeah. So if you have SARS-CoV-Coronavirus 2, yeah. the virus now that we've recognized since 2019, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you're going to be sick. 80 right. to 90% of people have no signs whatsoever and they don't even know if they're carrying the virus. That doesn't mean they're carrying the disease. Yeah. Just to show you how ridiculous it's become, yeah. I had an email on Friday from a woman in Arizona who had heard via the grapevine that two pet groomers had been infected from the pets that came there and died. That is totally absurd and not true. Pets could carry anything on their fur or yeah. on their faces or anywhere like yeah. they could any disease, even yeah. influenza or colds. OK, that doesn't mean they have the disease at all. And it doesn't mean they're going to transmit it to a person. Yeah. So we're 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 living in we have a pandemic, but we're living in mass hysteria because the information isn't correct. People aren't understanding and comprehending what's actually going on. And we're all panicking and thinking everyone's going to die who gets COVID-19. Um, yes. And I feel personally it's really important that we we talk about this openly and we we get the correct information out there because I don't feel that it's getting out to people. And I hope that through pets and the love of animals and obviously you you being a vet yourself, um, people will listen to this and understand a bit more and realise that this is not a panic epidemic, <laughs> you know, and we don't it's not going to help if we panic about everything, is it? Coronavirus has been around, have been around for, for decades and decades, from the 50s, okay? Many, many coronavirus days. A common cold can be a coronavirus in people. It's not influenza virus that mutates and has different strains every year. It's not the same thing. In fact, if you've recovered from uh, SARS coronavirus 2 infection, you can't be reinfected based on a study they've just published in rhesus monkeys. They took rhesus monkeys, they exposed them all to SARS coronavirus 2, the virus that could cause COVID-19 disease in some people, and none of them were sick. They then uh, waited, and they waited uh, three, four months, and they tried to reinfect them. They could not be reinfected. Hmm. So, so that's encouraging because people yeah. are saying, oh my God, you've recovered, but now you could catch it again and yeah. again and again. So this is part of the hysteria. It's not like the influenza virus. That yeah. The four stays the same. The envelope mutates and people can get a different strain of the flu, as you know, every year or every few years. Yeah. And so we've known about this virus uh, since the 50s, the 60s, the canine form and the bovine form, which caused diarrhea in young, especially in the young. Occasionally it caused a urogenital infection, but it did not cause respiratory infection. So it's total confusing. People don't understand. Human coronavirus 2 is a respiratory infection primarily. So, so if, if, a, if somebody says a dog has got coronavirus or a cat has got it, 
Um, what would the differences be there? Didn't I, I seem to remember you saying before it, it, it um, it's FIPPing cats, is that right? Or did I no, muddle that no, up? No, no, no. Coronaviruses are very, very common in cats. Right. They're in terror. They live in the bowel. Right. And there are many, many of them, and the cat just lives with them. In fact, there's this issue now about this cat in Belgium um, that subsequently died, and they said it had COVID-19. That's not true. Right. This particular cat had been exposed to people that were ill, and had some virus found uh, in the feces, okay? Right. Now, that doesn't mean the cat had the disease at all. It doesn't. The cat right. could have just shed it, you know? Yeah. So we have, there's no, no confirmatory test that that cat was infected, and people are going crazy about that in Europe right now. Yeah. So what happened is cats have a bowel form of coronaviruses. They have many enteric coronaviruses. Occasionally, one of them in some cats will mutate and cause feline infectious peritonitis. Right. And that is a high morbidity, high mortality disease. That's not a respiratory coronavirus. And these are alpha coronaviruses. The human coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, is a beta coronavirus. It's a different type of coronavirus. In the dog, we have bowel coronavirus, mostly in the bowel. It's not even seen anymore as a disease, actually. And we very rarely ever see it. It's self-limiting. It caused an orange stool, bright orange stool, in dogs that were also co-infected with parvovirus when oh. it became endemic. Parvovirus still is worldwide in the dog, okay, in the late 70s, early 80s. And so what happened was when dogs were malnourished or parasitized, they had parvovirus diarrhea. If they also got coronavirus, the bowel form, they would have some orange diarrhea. But it was immediately self-limiting. If you kept the, the dog at 80 degrees or higher Fahrenheit, it would kill the coronavirus in 24 to 36 hours. Wow. They would still have the parvovirus that had to be treated symptomatically. So we used to watch for it for orange stool and just keep the animals from the outdoors, keep them warm. That was wow. all in puppies and they were over it. Wow, so the, that's incredible. The wow. form of coronavirus is extremely rare in the dog. Right, okay. So this whole thing with them panicking about, oh, the cat had it and now it's opening up, everybody panicking, losing their minds. Just to reiterate, it is not so. This this cat it's didn't not have it. So. There's no evidence whatsoever yeah. that a dog or a cat could give coronavirus illness that turns into coronavirus 19 disease in people. It, there's no evidence whatsoever that yeah. that could happen. Oh, and there's no evidence that a person that yeah. was infected with the virus and has the disease can yeah. give it to a dog or a cat. I've got two things to ask you, actually, that have um, popped up, and I've been getting quite a lot of emails about it, and I wondered what your thoughts were. Um, one of them is people that have had puppy vaccinations you know the first ones they're all panicking because the the vets have closed because they're only there for the um, emergency services and the second lot so would you suggest tightering and leaving it because the vets are saying you're gonna have to start all over again when you come back in and don't take your pets out so what would you suggest if it was a puppy and it's only had the first vaccination well well first of all you can't do serum antibody titers uh, successfully and determine that that's the puppy's own innate active immunity unless they're over 16 weeks of old age and have not had a vaccine within at least three weeks of that right maternal immunity you know we're not talking about orphan puppies or those that were raised by cesarean section and never suckled on the mother and got colostrum okay let's yeah. assume the typical puppy that got colostrum from his or her mother yeah is going to have that immunity because they're all over vaccinated now the mothers yeah um for till 14 or 16 weeks. Yeah. And so if the puppy got, say, one vaccination and couldn't get another because the veterinary surgeries are closed, mm -hmm. as long as the people are staying indoors and taking care of themselves and their puppies, there's not going to be a problem. Yeah. So when they're allowed to get another vaccine, they can do it. Doing a titer isn't going to help with just one dose of vaccine. Yeah. It's not going to be uh, accurate or reliable. Yeah. Okay. And the same with kittens. You feel the same what, what would people do there if the kittens had the first same, same kittens, thing? But remember, kittens mature immunologically earlier. Right. And so you can give them another vaccine at four, 12 to 14 weeks rather than waiting till 16 weeks. Yeah. And it should be three weeks from a prior vaccine. 
So I'm getting, um, thank you for that. And I'm getting a lot of people say as well, and this is a real panic. Um, they're literally saying to me, well, you know, I, my, I've stopped vaccinating my, my dogs or cats. They've all been tightered, blah, blah, blah. And now they're panicking. They feel they need to rush to the vet or they have done. Um, and, and actually pets are getting sick from doing this. And they have rushed to the vets before they closed and they wanted an, the booster that they missed out on. And the vets are saying, well, we have to restart again even though they've been tightered. So just to reiterate, there is no reason, you, your dog can't all of a sudden catch COVID because it hasn't been vaccinated and the tighter proved that it was had immunity, right? Right, you don't need to start all over again. That's ridiculous. Yeah. If a, a puppy or a kitten has been properly vaccinated and the vaccines took, in other words, the, the yeah. pets were immunized, yeah. okay? And you prove that by doing a titer. If they've had titers before, They'll be fine. They yeah. don't have to be vaccinated again. Now, every three years, the World Small Animal Associ Veterinary Association and uh, the American Veterinary Medical Association and the Canadian, et cetera, et cetera, um, have all said that you can do it every three years. So three years from the prior yeah. titer, yeah. the pet can have another titer done. And if for some weird reason, 99% of them will be fine, they don't have a measurable titer. And I'm talking about titering and low now, not, yeah. not high like you would for an infection. Yeah. Then you can give a booster. Right. So that, that's for adult dogs as well that have, that have previously, you know, had a good titer test. We know that they don't need to be vaccinated. They don't need to rush out, you know, with, with adult dogs to then re -go, re and have, a, have a new they booster. Don't or whatever. Do that. Yeah. They absolutely could catch pointless. something else. Yeah. What? Yeah. They could catch canine flu, which is ubiquitous, yeah. okay? Influenza. Now, it's not a serious disease either, but if you're stressed, the animals are stressed, their immune system are suppressed. Yeah. If your animal has a chronic disease or you have a chronic disease, totally unrelated to sars cov Co coronavirus 2 or the disease of COVID-19, yeah. you don't want to go anywhere yeah. and stress yourself. And you certainly don't want to worry about it. Yeah. You just stay home. Uh, visit with your family and friends by video. Yeah. Um, if you're worried about exposures, stay at least six feet away from anybody. Yeah. Okay. Wash your hands in warm or cool soapy water for at least 20 seconds. Mm. Uh, if your hands are dry and cracked, don't dry them completely, but you can put a moisture water on after that. Yeah. If your hands are not cracked, you dry them thoroughly. That's all. And don't touch your face. Yeah. Hey, you easy. know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, absolutely. it's, you know, it's, it's, it, we're, we're trying to get that common sense through, you know, to, to everybody. And I think it's so important that we do listen and we do not keep panicking. We've had a lot of people changing over from fresh food diets and panicking and changing their dog's diet just overnight and they're getting um, diarrhea and all the rest of it. Have you got any tips for um, what you can give home remedy if they get diarrhea if you got what would you sort of suggest if they have done that yeah first of all some people have run out of the pet food their animals normally eat yeah and that are they're adjusted to yeah so you use human grade reagents remember organic if you don't use organic foods hopefully you can get them or you can't afford them you've got to worry about the herbicides and pesticides that have been sprayed on them Absolutely. particularly glyphosate okay so you want to use organic because organic foods do not contain a significant amount of these pesticides and herbicides. There was just, uh, Emma, a new report that came out uh, this week mm -hmm. that showed, look, non-organic whole flour, you know, all-purpose flour, yeah. or non-organic whole wheat flour, the bran in those flours gives you glyphosate levels 90 times higher than the recommended safe level for people. Wow. The same flours that are organic have nothing and 10 nanograms per gram is safe organic wow. flowers have five That's the non-organic flowers have 600 700 800 levels so we don't want to do that especially the bran so the bran is the outside of the grain okay and that's yeah. where the pesticides will accumulate yeah anyway so what do we do at home we need to sleep it's important to sleep at least eight hours if you can a night as yeah. an adult. Okay? Yeah. Uh, you need to rest. You need to exercise at home. And some people are now play, uh, taking their living rooms and playing basketball or playing yeah. um, other kinds of balls or pass the balloons with their families at home to yeah. keep active. Okay. Yeah. You want to take extra vitamin C. Mega doses of vitamin C are recommended. 
ascorbic acid. If you can't go out and buy that, use citrus fruit, okay, if you have some at home. Extra vitamin E, but not too much. Vitamin E and too much is dangerous. Mm -hmm. So for the average adult human, another 400 um, international units would be enough okay. per day on top of what you normally get. Yeah. If you're a Great Dane or an Irish wolfhound, you might need 600 because dogs have a different metabolism. Yeah. And remember, there are two drugs that are being touted now as being helpful. Right. Only one of them has no side effects. And that is favipiramir. Okay. That has no side effects. And it's been shown by the studies produced to date that it's safe to give and can be helpful. The other one is ramastirivir, and that one has side effects. Right. And tragically, in the current issue, last week's issue of Time magazine, they had a big drawing about how all of this happens, a big, um, what should we say, like a, a diagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they use ramastirivir, which is the one that has side effects. So you need favipiravir instead. Yeah. And they're now doing clinical trials on a vaccine, but the vaccine is in... Clinical trials, it won't be available. The results won't be available till next year. Yeah. And only the people that are ill are being vaccinated. Yeah. So people say, but Jean, we don't vaccinate pets when they're ill. Yeah. I said, we don't normally vaccinate people when they're ill. But in this case, they're trying to do anything to reduce the viral load. Yeah. And the risk to these people that have other diseases yeah. like cardiovascular disease and diabetes yeah. and God forbid a cancer. Right? Yeah. Remember, patients that have cancer have suppressed immune systems. Yeah, yeah. So you definitely don't want them out being exposed to anything in the environment, yeah. let alone SARS coronavirus or too. anybody else. So, it's, so just a, a quick tip for people that are at home: if their pets have diarrhea, cat or dog, what would you suggest they did rather than panicking and trying to cause an emergency and rush to the vet? Is there anything you can yeah, suggest? Yeah. Good, good question. If you your animal has diarrhea and is stressed. You can use slippery elm bark powder Love. or licorice root. Okay. You can use kaopectate if you have to have some that would use yourself. And if you happen to have a leftover prescription of metronidazole, you can use that as well for three to five days. Yeah. So all there's products, there's supplements called Firm Up. There's lots of them that are combination uh, gastrointestinal things that have uh clay and other things in them that cause a firming of the stool. Yeah. And if all else fails, high fiber foods like sweet potatoes or yams, pears. Oh, really? Sliced pears. Yes. They're Love very them. high in fiber. Oh, I didn't know that, actually, because pe yes. pears contain pectin, don't they? I wonder if that helps somewhere. Yes. And, and, and dogs and cats usually love sliced pears. If they're not organic, you should peel them. Right. Okay. Good. Good tip. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so at the moment, we've got the hysteria with, oh, my goodness, a cat has, has got, you know, COVID-19. I think a lot of people are getting muddled up with the word coronavirus, excuse me, got an itch, and COVID-19. Um, I think what you're really saying here in a nutshell is they are different and, you know, let's not panic every time we hear the word coronavirus. Um, Correct. And COVID and remember that when the corona uh Two, the corona, sorry, the SARS coronavirus began in 2003. It came from a civet cat. And oh. in China, where they were concerned, they killed 10,000 of them because they were concerned about it. Wow. Then they said it was caused by pangolins, those little uh, reptile type things. Well, that wasn't true. They don't, and snakes, they don't have it either. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the Mediterranean uh, form of coronavirus, which occurred between 2012 and 2018, that was from a dromedary from a camel. Oh, wow. Oh, I yeah, don't know. Interestingly, that. that's yeah. what they, these are not what we're talking about today. Yeah. And today, we believe it evolved from bats. Yeah. And it was mutation from bats because there's 96% genetic homology between SARS coronavirus 2 and bat coronavirus. So right. we believe that bats brought it to the world. Yeah. And that people were just, some people are sick. Yeah. And some people, God forbid, are dying. Yeah. Very so, sadly. Uh, I know. It, it's it's uh, horrendous. So what's, what are you and um, your husband Charles doing there? To, are you staying in? Because you, you're in California at the moment, aren't you? Oh, yeah, gov yeah. Governor Newsom has required that all of us stay in and be Lockdown, self lockdown at home. 
uh, until the end of April, at least. And we're waiting to know. So we go to buy food. We go to a pharmacy if we need to. Mm -hmm. uh, we stay home. Uh, we had to cancel our Passover Seder. We've had it for over 30 years in our home here, yeah. a vegetarian Seder. We had to tell everybody we couldn't have it because Governor Newsom has said you shouldn't be in a group of 10 or more people. Yeah, yeah. So we, we can't. So and you've we're, always we're done it. It's, it's very hard, isn't it? So um, are you still working? What are you doing? Are you just retired and sitting around reading books? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm joking. You sitting around yeah, reading books doing nothing. Clinics are considered emergency services and yeah. we're open. Yeah. Uh, even veterinary supplements are considered an emergency right. if an animal needs a supplement to maintain its health, like yeah. we've talked about. Um, as far as my own clients are concerned, uh, for next week, I'm seeing them by video. Right. So we set out a video like you and I are talking today, uh -huh. and I will see the clients then because none of them that are really ill are going to be turned away. And so what the people do is they drive in the parking lot, our technicians take the animal from the owner, yep. go into the clinic, and the owner sees what's going on by video in the clinic. Right. Some people don't want to be uh separated from us so they can come into the clinic but they have to stay six feet away from anybody there yeah that's all yeah but only because we're we're making common sense hygienic rules and yeah. everybody washes their hands that's yeah. all yeah and doesn't touch their face so if if somebody yeah exactly don't touch your face so if somebody says oh my you know my pet um it's it's really not very well um, what are the self-checks they can do at home? Do you recommend they take their temperature themselves, look at the gums? Is there any of those sort of tips you could give to people? Because I think people are panicking a bit. They think, oh, my God, you know, you can go to your vet if it's an emergency, but we want Absolutely. to limit it, don't we? The first thing you have to know is, does your pet have a fever? So you need to find out, do the temperature. And remember, pets are different than people. So in the dog, uh, for Fahrenheit, it would have to be above 102.5. For the cat, a little bit higher, even 103. Mm -hmm. So if the if the pet has a fever of yeah. 105 or 107, like it could have with influenza, not coronavirus two, uh, then you would go to the veterinarian immediately. Yeah. Of course, it's an emergency, and yeah. you have to find out. It could have anything. I mean, God forbid the animal ate uh, something poisonous in the yeah. backyard. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We've had that situation where some. Puppy went, Labrador puppy went out at nine months old and chewed in a bunch of oleander, which shouldn't have been there anyway. But. Oh, oh, so yeah. the animal got sick and the owner's a veterinarian. Mm. And he asked me by email, what do I do? I said, well, probably you have to have poison control tell you how to get that stuff out of the, the puppy's yeah. stomach, right? Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Um, thank you, Jean. I think this has been really helpful. And I was going to ask you if perhaps you could come on maybe next week or the week after again, perhaps we could do another update because this is moving yeah, so fast. Um, sure. I think it's really important. And you, for me, I mean, you know, I adore you anyway, but you are the voice of reason. And I think it's very sensible to have you here. Um, just one last thing before we go, do you believe that pets should not be off the lead you know because people are worried that someone's going to sneeze on them and they're going to like you said you know get the the virus or something on the fur what should they do should they just wipe them down with a damp cloth when they come in or they what wipe should they them do down, yes yes yeah now people say you can use clorox or a sanitizer but those things will likely uh bleach the coat so don't do that just use uh, warm soapy water and wipe them down then rinse them a little bit with plain water okay right. yeah yeah and so don't touch the face yeah yeah so just give <laughs> them a quick wash hands, yeah right? so we're washing everything i have um when we bring the chopping into the house we take our shoes off we put our slippers on um and we have a table we have a dirty side and a clean side so we put the bags on there and we're sort of wiping over the the packets which we kind of do anyway but it may have been a bit more careful we put them on one side and then we leave them for a while and take them in so what are your thoughts about um takeaways and pizzas and things people are saying it's fine to get a takeaway because covid19 can't live on hot food but my personal feelings are with the box like a pizza box the pizza boys bringing it what do you feel is it safe to eat takeaway foods or would you say no no you can receive takeaway things but then you've got to cheat the outside container as though it's potentially infected right so you would have to discard it 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's garbage and you would have to wash your hands in warm or cool soapy water for at least 20 seconds. Yep. Dry them thoroughly and not touch your face. Yeah. And don't touch your face. <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So, so us, we'll come back next week, hopefully, and we'll have a chat a, a sure. bit more about it and, and keep us updated. Thank yeah. you as always. Okay. And sure. um, I'll see you very soon. Thank you very much, Jean. You're welcome, Emma. Bye, dear.